ladies and gentlemen. This is the meeting of the Council of the City of Southfield for Monday, July 30th, 2012. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Fricassi. Here. Mr. Frazier. Here. Mr. Jordan. Here. Mr. Moss. Here. Mr. Seiler. Here. Mr. Lance. Here. Ms. Seymour. Present. You have seven members present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Would you please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance?
again, just so that the group knows, um, nobody is being housed at our facility. Our facility is really based around supportive services. Um, we have an on-site computer lab as well as clinic space, um, family and child playroom, um, and those kind of facilities as well as case managers that are helping our clients work through the program. I would encourage anybody here that's interested to come for a tour as well as potentially participate um, in one of the host week activities. There are congregations throughout Oakland County, or throughout Southfield, including um, Hope United Methodist um, and uh, Church of the Transfiguration, Sherizetic, that have all been involved with us throughout the years. So um, I just appreciate the opportunity. There's so much to go into that I feel I don't want to take up too much time. So I will pass you. Please, no, you your hand to the court, please. Absolutely. All right. um, and thank you so much. And I would encourage anybody here who would like to learn more about our programs and services to, to come for a tour. All right. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. We appreciate uh, the community needs to know about this, especially in these times. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment. I appreciate the council president for putting this on the agenda after I asked. I met Bob uh, at a city event earlier this year um, and did notice that it popped up in our community. It said 12 Mile Southfield properly in the Labor Village, but it, it extends into the Southfield community. Um, and it, it was an eye-opening experience uh, just because you realize that there are families that really are one emergency or one crisis away from losing secure housing options. Um, and this is an important thing that I thought Liz should broadcast uh, a televised meeting to our community uh, because they've moved essentially uh, their administrative headquarters into our backyard. Uh, one last quick point, which was interesting. You know, obviously they're in need of clothing donations and you think as we donate clothes to those in need, you know, it's usually an old t-shirt or, or sweatpants or, or something that we, we want to discard. But what they're uh, in particular in need of is, is business, business type attire. Uh, for people who uh, are in need of a job interview and don't have the proper attire to get it, to get back up on their feet. So I encourage the community at large, if you're, if you're in a position where you can donate business attire, uh, contact Liz uh, at the, uh, the South Oakland Shelter. Thank you, Mr. Mons. That's a good point. Yes, Mr. That one point that you were making about business attire, uh, Men's Warehouse has recently been collecting uh, uh, yeah, trade-ins, uh, easy used trade-ins, you know, well, uh, that are still in style, and they give you a percentage off, and they donate the, the suits and business clothes to people that are in need, so maybe they need to contact Men's Warehouse.
in the amount of $13,999 to demolish the dilapidated building and put up the site at 25430 West Nine Mile Road in accordance with the demolition order issued by the 46th District Court. Funds are provided for this purpose in the 2012-13 budget contractual services account. Item D is the award of bid to Superior Demolition of Ronald Michigan in the amount of $17,820 for demolition and site clearance at 24818 Lowell Lane. The residential structure is significantly fire and water damaged and needs to be demolished. Funds are provided for this purpose in the 2012-2013 budget contractual services account. <coughs> Item E is the council authorization for the mayor and city clerk to sign an agreement with AEW Core Property Trust of Boston, Massachusetts for the investment of up to $2.5 million of self-field employment retirement system assets in core U.S. real estate. This is in accordance with the council approved asset allocation model for the retirement system. Item F is council authorization for the mayor and city clerk to sign an agreement in the amount of six $1,267 for the Oakland County Road Commission to reimburse the city for a portion of the 2012 costs incurred by the city in sweeping county roads, 10 Mile Road, 12 Mile Road, and Lassa Road, located within the city of Southfield. While the county reimbursement, county reimbursement covers only three sweepings, July, August, and October, it may take several multiples of three to maintain all major streets to a uniform and acceptable standard throughout the city. Item G is authorization for the mayor and city clerk to sign an agreement with the Southfield Nonprofit Housing Corporation for that entity to provide 90% of the funding for a senior social worker to continue to be located at McDonald Towers. The remaining 10% is funded within the 2012-2013 Human Services Budget to cover the portion of time and effort that is available for the senior social worker to assist with programs for the general senior population within citywide. Any motion? Madam Chair. Mr. Frazier. I move that we approve consent agenda items of C, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Support. Motion by Mr. Frazier. Support by Mr. Seiber. All in favor. Madam Chair. Madam, yes, this is Jordan. Why does that one just come in before we vote it? And that is consent agenda items C and D. Do you chair the district? Charette. I noticed that we are demolishing two buildings, and there are two separate companies that are doing the services, and one being $13,000 and the other one being $17,000. Is there some way that you could possibly consider using one company or just something that's different? To the chair, it was two separate demolitions. It is the same company that won through low bid in both. We had to bid them separately, and the same company was significantly low bid. They have done work for us in the past and for other municipalities to a good high standard and have stayed within their budgets. The first demolition is from a court order, and that is on Nine Mile Road, and that is the site of a business that, a fire, and it had to be demolished simply to clear the site and make it available for future development. And the second is a residential property that now is under the ownership of the city, and it is being demolished for the improvements of the neighborhood, and also that we then could either sell the land to a developer in the future. Is there any way that we could consider possibly bundling these things in the future or making sure that we can get the cost lower if we go out for a bid and then give them X amount of property, which could possibly be to our advantage? It's a good point. Fortunately, we don't have a lot of these demolitions, and I hope that we never have to have so many that there would be economies of scale. But in these particular, these two demolitions, there are two different types of operations, one being residential, the other commercial, different materials, different issues, 
and uh, we, uh, we bid them separately. Uh, but if we had uh, if we had more than this, we would probably would bond them. Up. So uh, we will consider that in the future. Uh, but at least two, I, I would doubt that it would have made uh, that much difference. But it's a good point. Okay. If we have if we have either large, uh, for example, larger um, uh, facilities that need to be demolished, or a larger number, uh, it would it would certainly make sense. So we have taken note of your comments. Thank you very much. My other question, Madam Chair, has to do has to do with in agenda item C. And I see the, the, the payment or the uh, personnel cost for the senior citizen social worker. You mean G? Did you say? I'm uh, sorry, G. Is ninety four thousand. What's all included in those? Oh, uh, that's the total cost, uh, all wages, benefit uh, costs, uh, and anything having to do with that position, which ninety percent is paid. By the nonprofit housing corporation. Thank you. Um, yes, I had uh, a question also on the demolition, uh, Mr. Charette. Uh, $4,000 difference between the two, one's commercial, one's residential, but $4,000 is quite a large percentage of the total amount that uh, what would be the residential. Idea? Was A complex, B bigger, uh, and C basically uh, more difficult challenge. Uh, and our city attorney is raising her hand, so she can help out here too through the chair. One of the other differences uh, through the president would be that there was an in ground pool in the local land property, and that had to be out of there and filled, and it was an expensive, it'd be an expensive process. Thank you very much. That's my question. Thank you. Well, we have a motion by Mr. Frazier, supported by Mr. Seiber. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion has carried. Next we come to public hearing. Uh, Mr. Cohen? Through the chair. The first public hearing is a second modification to Bassett Building Company consent judgment to permit the addition of religious institutions and accessory buildings or uses customarily installed to such use if 15612-15638 at West 10 Mile Road. The east 18 feet of Lot 9 and all of Lots 10 through 13 of the Holiday Manor subdivision, which property is located on the north side of West 10 Mile Road, west to Greenfield Road. The consent judgment has been modified based upon consensus at the 71612 Committee of the Whole Meeting. A representative is here to make a few brief comments before the public hearing. Please give your name and address for the record. My name is Neil Single, address is 17365 Shorefield Place in Southfield. Please, okay. I guess in summary, I just wanted to, I wanted to thank everybody, not that this thing is approved or anything at this point, but um, it's, it's been a long journey, and um, I want to thank the Site Plan Commission, the Planning Commission, um, the City Council, Mayor for her support, uh, the city manager, as well as the city attorney, uh, the city clerk, and especially um, I wanted to thank Terry Crowe and Jeff Spence of the planning division, who've been very, very helpful. This is a very out of the box type of um, project that we're that we're taking on, something that was a little bit different. And um, throughout this whole course of about two to uh, you know two two to four months or so. Um, there was uh, negotiations. There was there's a lot of great feedback that we got from council, and uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't an easy thing I think for council to see at the beginning, but I think as time uh, as as time went on and as the plan evolves, I think the city really has seen that the fact that if we do approve this and we put this new synagogue inside this uh, inside that new facility that we're trying, uh, it's really going to impact. Community, the Jewish Orthodox community uh, in Southfield. As I said before, there's a lot of young uh, families that are moving into the community more 
Thank you through the chair. Our next public hearing is GP1241, a special use request by Nathan Zack, right price appliances, to allow an appliance resale shop in the I-1 Industrial Zoning District, located at 22476 Telegraph Road, on the east side of Telegraph Road between Norcrest and West Nine Mile Road. I have a brief video presentation. Thank you. 
can be fixed, which we'd like to reuse as much as possible versus recycling. Um, we um, harvest parts from the other models and uh, basically create a, take all of the high-end products and um, make them able to be used again. So um, this uh, appliance store is an outlet for us to be able to get those back into the community. Um, and we wanted to place it in Southfield because we know that there's a lot of um, stores on along 8 Mile, but a lot of them are lower end appliances, and I personally don't feel safe going down there to go buy these appliances. So we thought that Southfield would be a great um, place where you know families can go that can't necessarily afford a new washer or dryer but still want to get something nice for their home. Um, so that's why we chose Southfield. Um, you can sit down and be finished. This is a public hearing, and I declare the public hearing open. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward. Is your name addressed for the record? Good evening, I'm Lavani. I'm Mary Waters, former state representative, 1276 in the right place in the city of Detroit, 4207. So I was listening to uh, the young lady talk about the resale appliance shop, and I thought, well, I should comment, comment on that. What an, I, a great idea it is. And you know, the city of Southfield is also the city where small businesses are thriving um, a great deal. And oftentimes, people do look for an opportunity to purchase washers and dryers and stoves and refrigerators and and so forth and so on, and that they cannot afford to go to Sears to, to pay for uh, brand new. And so I just want to congratulate um, this particular company for, for such a wonderful idea and the resale shop, and it's certainly something that I support. And we just say that, you know, I have a washer, a uh, whirlpool washer in my basement right now. I can probably get to you as well. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
I noticed that uh, there are already uh, appliances in the in the building, and there are windows all across the front. And the way they're in the building, all you see is the back side of the appliance when uh, when you're driving down the road. Uh, and I think it's going to be a kind of a problem because I understand that you want the customers to come in and see the front of the appliance. Yes, that was a mistake of the manager that is in charge of the facility that has been remedied and you've driven by in the past couple of days. I talked with him and told him to turn this around. So. Actually, you know, if you turn sideways, it would be better than having turned with back to the windows. Yeah. Um, and um, also, I noticed out in front the sign. You have the sign already. The ground sign. The ground sign, yes. Yeah. And it, it appears. If you're driving by, that the business is already open. It doesn't say that it's coming. It's just the sign is. Would you prefer to put a sign in that says coming soon? Well, uh, <laughs> until you get approval, you know, it's it's not really so a business. Was, yeah, that was a misunderstanding between us and the sign company. Um, they were supposed to wait till after this meeting to put it in. Um, so I do apologize about that. Well, put a sheet over it until. We can absolutely do that. <laughs> Thank you. Was that the kind of supported? Yes. Okay. Um, I am uh, very hesitant to uh, vote for this. Uh, you know that uh, that area is uh, is growing in a uh, high tech uh, uh, way uh, with Lear Corporation and they're buying Sims out and expanding uh, Lear Corporation. Um, the use, the use really isn't, as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, the kind of business that that um, should be placed in a, in a tech corridor. Um, the uh, statement that eight mile is not safe, I think you made that statement. Uh, in Southfield, eight mile is safe, and. Um, we have very few incidents, if any. Um, and that is the type of business that I think should be on 8 Mile Road because of the amount of traffic, uh, the 8 Mile Road uh, corridor group are looking for a new uh, people to move in some of the vacant uh, facilities there. Um, but I think that uh, we have to be very selective in what we put in that tech corridor. Um, hopefully, uh, the uh, customers, those who uh, do business with Lear, would come into Southfield and build uh, uh, future tech uh, porters. Uh, the building is very dated. Uh, it needs an entire new facade uh, to the north of the Orlando Shopping Center has been redone. And this uh, building is right on that corner there and this uh, doesn't uh, in my opinion, uh, be a, a, um, a good thing to the, for that area. Uh, I don't mind used appliances being sold, but, but it's the way you market them. Uh, it can be done with class, and it can be done like a warehouse where, as Mr. Fraser stated, you know, they're in the windows and someone not caring how they are shown to the general public. The last thing I want to see is the back end of repair shops in the tech quarter. And, and so I, I don't feel that you have really uh, made enough of a, of a improvement on that building for me to approve it. Thank you, Mr. Pelton. Mr. Pelton, Mr. Sutton. Um, I wanted to uh, uh, say that I feel this is a win-win. That we have a vacant the building has been vacant for a number of years, um, and we're getting into business. Um, South of I intend to support your request. I did have a question regarding um, the uh, resale <coughs> of the appliances. Do they come with any kind of warranty? Um, we will do a warranty. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. We will do a warranty. Yes. Yeah. Typically, what is the warranty? Um, we're still debating between a three month and a six month warranty, but we will be able to extend it for a fee as well. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's what you're saying is very true. Um, uh, you look at the price today of uh, refrigerators, a thousand dollars. The little ones are five or six hundred, but um, um, it's a big investment uh, for uh, for a family. Um, so uh, 
think the ingenuity of the people who open that business is terrific. They're going to do very, very well. So, of course, I support it. Thank you. Mr. Yes, sir. There's uh, appliances that are brought in that are not uh, repairable or are going to be disposed of after parts are taken. Will there be any of them stored outside and when they get unloaded, or are they going to be immediately put into the building? Um, actually, our facility in Sterling Heights um, is where all of the appliances are taken and then uh, repaired. So only finished products, only ready to be sold appliances will actually be in the building, and nothing will be outside. Okay. Thank you. I wanted to follow up on that. I want to be clear. This is a retail facility. So it will not engage people swapping or bringing in materials for, because it says resale. So I want to make sure this is clearly a retail use with a, uh, a floor plan that someone will come in and shop, buy, purchase it, and leave. So the only way you can get appliances is with cash or payment for the cost. Yes. And so, say for instance someone did say I have a item I would like you to pick up. Do you engage in that type? Say I come in and I say I have a washer or a dryer. Like um, it was just proposed. Are you engaging in that material in that kind of activity? Um I would say that we haven't discussed it but we would be open to recycling them if they desired them rather than throwing them out. I mean, um, so what would happen in that case? They would be there taken back to our warehouse in Sterling Heights. So there, that's another department. Would that they wouldn't be brought to the store in Southwell? Absolutely not. Uh, I have the same concern about storing um, product in the lobby area or in the outside area, and you said that won't happen. Yeah, nothing will be outside. The, the last thing I want to ask, you are, um, do you offer warranties on your products when you sell them? Um, we will be offering a warranty, yes. And when you say appliances, tell me what are some of the, you mentioned computers and then you said washers and dryers. So what are we, what's the range of appliances? Um, we will have um, washers, dryers, uh, stoves, um, whether gas or electric. Um, we have refrigerators. Um, we will have some microwaves, but we don't really get that many of those. I um, unfortunately we I'll just tell you this because we we don't have a ordinance for it. But along that telegraph corridor, and I think your use is very creative and it's something that is environmentally refreshing. However, the neon lights inside of the windows of retail. It's my firm belief it cheapens the aesthetics along Telegraph Road. We already talked about how the, uh, what do you see when you drive past. And I, I read that there is a, a landscaping and a uh, maintenance agreement on that. If you are on Telegraph, it is a very high traffic area. And while you're providing a great service, and I think it's good, I also want you to be a good neighbor and maintain that site and make sure that you, um, with your signage, because are you going to keep that um, canopy that's currently there? Um, we took the awning down. Okay. Um, we will, um, we have replaced the uh, final along the front of it, and we'll be putting it back up. Um, uh -huh. It has been approved um, by the sign department. Um, Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But I do want you to know that that maintenance agreement, we're very serious about that. And um, is the name of it, going, what is the name of the business going to be? Right, right. Right, right. Okay. And I do have a, I do have a schematic of the awning if you would like to see it. I would like to see it. Could we wait until we finish the questions? Yeah, just uh, listening to the conversation and heard that there's some improvements that are already being made now to the property um, itself. Uh, what is your anticipation that all these things, if you're approved tonight, are going to be done and when are you going to be open for business? Um, we would hope to be 
open in the next two weeks. We do have um, some, we have already had our uh, inspections um, for our CFO done, so we have a couple of things that they gave us to work on. Um, so um, the majority of them is, uh, is electrical, um, as far as like egress lighting and things along those lines, and our, um, and our electrician will be starting on those this week. I'm, I'm definitely impressed with the, with the, the history of the, uh, of the uh, business owner uh, and being so successful in, 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 uh, in having businesses like this and, and being able to kind of keep them off the ground um, and running and going uh, beyond state borders. Uh, so I'm, I'm impressed and uh, would be intending to support this as well. Mr. Pagan. Yeah, let me kind of get this straight. We're here tonight for your approval for special use. And you've already had permits and the CEO. We do not have the CEO, but we just have You've already expended dollars to retrofit the building? Yes. That was an income? I'm, I'm sorry? That, that's, that's before you know how we were going to vote tonight? Yes. First of the planner, do we uh, in any way encourage people to spend money on the facility before it comes before council for approval? We do not. So there's been no uh, conversation to these individuals from the building department planning that uh, would seem that they would get approval tonight and start working. Okay. Mr. President. In case you didn't catch what he just said, it's highly risky for a person to spend the kind of money that you've already spent in order to, uh, hoping that it gets approved. Because if this doesn't get approved, um, all the stuff that's in there has come out. And also, um, if it if this is successful, it was a good risk. You know, you threw the dice and won. But uh, you might want to take this into consideration if he's going to. Sort of chain. <laughs> um, we have we have discussed that as well, uh, the owner and I. And um, his reasoning for starting right away is, you know, and, and putting so much money into the building already. We've done we've redone the, you know, we've painted and um, put epoxy on the floors, and we've put quite a bit of money into the into the building already. Um, but his reasoning behind that is um, that he wants to be open as fast as possible if it is approved and time is money, et cetera. So he wanted to get them done now. So that way, uh, you know, pending review, we can open sooner rather than later. What I see here is just a lack of knowledge of what should transpire in all the business. And uh, that can be forgiven. I understand what you've done, or we shouldn't hold it against you, because I know it's a very important type of business for our people today. So, of course, I'm still voting for it, and I, I hope the council does, and I think they will. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cove, when it is a special use, how, does, I mean, how, is, how do we get to this point that we've had nothing, I'm sure you've had some input into this, we don't know what kind of landscaping plan or what, what the requirements are. Just the chair of the... Let uh, me just finish. I mean, the concern really is about the appearance of uh, being across from Lear. So if you could address some of those issues. Through the chair, the, what, what triggers the special use is it's a non-industrial use in an industrial district. So the retail component triggers the special use. The site plan issues are done administratively in this district. Um, of course, there's part and parcel as a special use conditions that the council can place reasonable conditions on the site. We have tried working with the applicant on um, improving the facade. Therefore, um, they've agreed to replace the canopy, clean up the front. Um, they're working with the building department on signage. They agreed to trim the trees, put new landscaping in, put a pedestrian connection from the main walk to the front end to their entrance in the building and do some other ancillary cleanup on the site. Um, all that has been documented through our reviews of the Planning Commission and Council. But 
the specific use does not require a site plan in the district. And those site plan issues are done administratively. But of course, the council can place reasonable conditions as part of the special use approval. We're proposing, we're not being asked to approve any of these special conditions. I think we should. I think we should make that part of this. Council? I'll make a motion to approve. There is a motion. We have a motion. You support it by Ms. Jordan. Well, the question is, should we, these conditions that Mr. Crow just talked about, should be incorporated into, I think, into this motion. That's the question. Through the chair, if you look at your packet, there is a proposed recommendations resolution for city council, which includes many of these items. Includes all of that? All right. So that's already been taken care of with this vote. Is that correct? That's correct. Good. Okay. All right. We have a motion by Ms. Jordan, supported by Mr. Lance. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. On the motion, we have six days and one day. So you are approved, but you have conditions to meet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Crow, site plan? Through the chair, our next item is a site plan, SP-1287, a site plan review request. Mike Wanley from Bravo Kilo, Inc., representing the owner of Fitzpatrick Properties, LLC, to demolish the existing Burger King restaurant located at 26211 West Belknap Road and reconstruct a new 2100 gross square foot Burger King restaurant with drive-thru and associated parking. The property is located on the southwest corner of West Belknap Road and Franklin Road. The reason this is before you tonight is that we did not have an approved site plan on our file. Therefore, we're bringing it to the council for approval. I have a brief video presentation, and Mr. Wanley is available to make some introductory comments after the presentation and answer any questions the council may have. SP-1287 is a site plan review request of Mike Wanley of Bravo Kilo, Inc., representing the owner of Fitzpatrick Properties, LLC, for the construction of a new Burger King restaurant. The property is located at 26211 West 12 Mile Road at the southwest corner of 12 Mile and Franklin Road in Section 18 of the city. The subject property, as well as the properties to the north across 12 Mile Road, to the west, to the south across Northwestern Highway, and to the east across Franklin Road are zoned B3 general business. With regard to the existing land uses, the subject property is developed as a Burger King restaurant. The property to the north across 12 Mile Road is developed as a medical office building. The properties to the west are developed as an office building and various commercial uses. The properties to the south across Northwestern Highway are developed as an office building and a gas station. The properties to the east across Franklin Road are developed as Mr. Joe's Restaurant and the PNC Bank. The site contains 1.35 acres of land with 168.64 feet of frontage on 12 Mile Road, 432.17 feet of frontage on Franklin Road, 164.47 feet of frontage on Northwestern Highway, and a depth of 168.64 feet. The submitted site plan reflects the demolition of the existing Burger King restaurant and the construction of a new 2,100 square foot Burger King restaurant with drive-thru and associated parking. There are 42 parking spaces required and provided on site. The elevations reflect a mix of brick, stacked stone, ebus, metal, and glass. Issues considered by the planning department during the review of the site plan were the site plan requirements of the zoning ordinance. The proposal is in accordance with the Southfield Comprehensive Master Plan noting regional mixed use for this parcel. Through the chair, this item has gone to the site plan review committee and has received favorable recommendations. 
Good evening, Mike Longley, Board 220, Edison Lakes Parkway, Mishawaka, Indiana. Um, thank you, Madam President and Council, for hearing our uh, proposal tonight. Uh, we are, as uh, the presentation uh, suggests, looking to replace the existing restaurant and uh, install a new uh, restaurant in its place. Uh, we tried to address some of the things that uh, the old uh, restaurant currently aren't as uh, efficient, the drive-through circulation. Uh, we created more green space within the property. We addressed the need all uh, stormwater management requirements. I've worked extensively with Terry and Jeff Spence, Terry Pro and Jeff Spence, to uh, make sure that the concerns that have been brought to our attention were addressed as they were brought. Um, we think that this is the right thing to do with this location, that our franchise agreement is up, which requires us to either remodel the existing site or to uh, replace it. And we choose to replace it if it's possible and we get a favorable recommendation as opposed to renovating. Um, we've been a member of the community for several years. We acquired this uh, site six years ago um, and we're active in the community and scholarships and other things and charities. So we want to continue to be a part of the community and uh, we seek your approval. Madam Chair, we've seen this uh, site plan and uh, the site plan committee has questions uh, regarding uh, this. I think it's a great improvement uh, how it uh, addresses Northwestern and, and uh, the visibility from, uh, from Northwestern and also uh, from 12 Mile Road. Um, it's nicely landscaped and, and uh, and I think all of us agreed at the committee meeting that we approved the site plan. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Yes, Councilor. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you have, are you also uh, linked with the one on Telegram Road? Yes, yes, sir. Um, I believe the design on the, on the new one is going to be different than the one on Telegram Road. Yes, sir. I've got an elevation I can board here. Wi-Fi is free throughout the rest. And that is a 
few questions because it looks like you cannot access immediately the drive through um, from the 12 mile entrance. You'd have to go around the building. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, that was uh, per uh, the planning and traffic engineer. They wanted to have a one, one way circulation throughout the lot. Is there going to be a differentiation between the signage of that's on Northwestern Highway as opposed to 12 mile that encouraging drive through traffic to, come, to enter off Northwestern Highway? Um, or or what, what would be the difference in, in, in showing you know, the two entrances? Uh, well, as far as signage from the entrance, I, I, uh, we do not currently have any uh, designation on you know this, this entrance for drive through. Um, we have one way arrows and internal signage. Okay. Just want to make sure that if anyone you know is entering off of uh, 12 Mile Road, they know to go around and not create you know confusion and, and a traffic holdup, especially in the in the moments when it's first being open and new to the community. Yeah, yeah. for the chair, sure. to, to Councilman Moss. Um, also, you can see that the um, parking has been angled to encourage one-way flow as well. So when when cars exit um, off the Franklin Road. Um, parking spaces, they, they're, um, they have to back out and continue in one direction. Okay. What's, what's the timeline of this project? Uh, I'd like to get going Council's approval uh, immediately. We haven't gone past the uh, engineering stage at this point. We need to do architectural development. So it'll take about four to six weeks. If we could technically start in eight to ten weeks without yeah. Council's approval. Yeah. Okay. This is a, a big improvement to what's there right now. Uh, I don't think we have a motion. Uh, I'd like to move approval of site plan 1287 to our new burger thing. Motion by Mr. Cyber, supported by Mr. Frazier, to approve SB 1287 to our burger thing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion has carried. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Next, we come to the communication portion. We have a first a request is from Ms. Bernadine Traub. Is Ms. Traub available? Hi. Hello. And um, we step to the mic and please give your name and address for the record and then you have five minutes. Good afternoon, Council. Good evening. Excuse me. I'm getting over the cold. In um, late June, DTE cleared down some trees in front of my house. And the number of wood in the yard. And in early July, I got an issue notice from COVID saying that I am storing uh, firewood on my lot. And I called them and told them that, first of all, the firewood, the wood was not on my lot. It was on my neighbor's property. And that DTE had cut down the trees. The lady at COVID enforcement told me that whether DTE cut them down or not, they were my responsibility to remove them. Well, I knew that the wood was not on my property, but my neighbors are elderly people, and I started to make arrangements to get the wood removed anyway because they're elderly. Well, on Friday, July the 13th, the city of Southfield came and removed the wood. I had arranged for it to be removed on Saturday. And I was just wondering, why was it that when the wood was on my property, it's my responsibility to move it, when it's on my neighbor's property, it's the city of Southfield's responsibility to remove it. So that caused me to question the integrity of the code enforcement department, because they didn't know what the property ba uh, barriers were. That's number one. It also caused me um, to bring these two questions to the council. Generally, how is it decided on what is removed from the from residence property? And specifically, how 
wasn't decided that my neighbors would, would be removed by the city, and when it was on my property, it was my responsibility. After my, putting my request in to uh, speak before this honorable body, I did get a call on July 26th from one of our, our city employees, and I don't remember his name, unfortunately. It began with a W. And he explained to me that we have seasonal employees in the code enforcement department, and that um, one of them must have misinformed me that Southfield typically requires DTE to remove those trees. However, sometimes they don't. And so the city would just go and remove the, the trees. He apologized for the initial notice that I got, um, and he explained uh, some other things to me. Well, I was relatively satisfied with the answers that he gave me on the phone. However, I do think that the code enforcement personnel should know when property lines are, and minimally should check prior to sending out notices to residents about uh, violations of the code. I also would like to see better training and monitoring for seasonal employees so that misunderstandings like this won't happen in the future. Thank you. Yes, I'd uh, like to thank uh, the resident for bringing this to our attention. Uh, we have uh, many kudos and uh, letters of uh, praise for uh, our uh, code enforcement and uh, a, uh, our concern for the appearance of the city. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't get better. So we always encourage people through our 24-hour uh, hotline to tell us about any concerns that they have. Uh, we appreciate that uh, uh, these were described in detail and uh, we will take them back. I was uh, undoubtedly Mr. Winkowski that you talked to, who's the manager of uh, code enforcement uh, and community appearance uh, activity, and we will certainly uh, work on uh, improving the orientation of any of our uh, uh, part-time uh, personnel, temporary personnel. We do offer a number of opportunities in the summer uh, to youth, and uh, so we'll We'll step up our uh, orientation program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shred. The next uh, recognition, the next request for recognition is Mr. Gerard Mullen. Mr. Mullen, would you please step forward? And give your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes. Madam President. My name is Gerard Mullen. Since 1968, I have lived at 17880 Lee Street. And since 1961, I have lived, I have worked here in this city, my city, the great city of South Hill. Tonight, I am not here to talk about those nice guys at Denzel. P-E-N-S-O, Denzel, Council's favorite corporate criminal and Southfield's best known fellow and the city's number one tax avoider. <laughs> Instead, I'm here tonight to make the following suggestion to Council, that you folks. In order to encourage greater citizen participation in Southfield city government, I propose that Council award an annual prize for the best presentation given at the council meetings during the communications portion of the agenda. The prize, the winner would have their picture, a full page photo published in the Southfield Calendar, reenacting their award winning performance for council. This photo would be placed above the month of the winner's birthday. <laughs> <clears throat> this would add needed variety to an already stale calendar. We're all sick and tired of the same old photos, year in and year out. It's time for a change. For example, in this, cal in this year's calendar alone, 
There are four. Count them four. Uno, dos, tres, cuantos. That's right, four. Full page photos of Top of the Lake, Council's favorite project. Also known as Denzel Park. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Council, 
it's time for a change. The most important thing right now in Southfield is public safety. Council, you said that you appreciate our officers. You even compliment them on TV when it's convenient. Yet you have not done the right thing. Go ahead, make my day again. Give our police officers a contract now. Settle this matter now. Council, if you continue at this rate, you are jeopardizing the people's public safety. Council, tell me and the voters, what's more important? Is it fracking resolutions, free cars, free gas, free trips, free food, or public safety? It's time for a change, Council. It's public safety time. Through the chair, Mr. Uh, with regard to the comments made, um, it's kind of difficult. Uh, there's a number of erroneous uh, concepts that have been articulated. Uh, if I could, I'll just go down the ones that I think are the most significant uh, to the public. Uh, so we'll start with the last comment that the public safety is jeopardized in this city. That is absolutely not true. We have three to five minute response time. Uh, we also have had uh, virtually no citizen complaints. Uh, we continue to have no citizen complaints, or virtually no citizen complaints. And when we do get them, we do uh, investigate them, and most of the time uh, they turn out to be uh, simply a misunderstanding. Uh, but we have not had any significant uh, mistakes that have been made. Uh, in terms of the public safety uh, during this period when we are in the selection process. As far as blaming the council for a delay, there's no blame to be had. We have a very deep and sophisticated group of leadership in this city. We have acting chiefs in the police department that are tremendously com uh, competent and have done a tremendous job and will do the job until the selection uh, is completed, which will be soon. This is coming into probably one of the most difficult periods in our history to be either a police chief or a fire chief. And as I stated at the last meeting uh, in the committee of the whole, uh, uh, in the study session, uh, that we will take the appropriate time to make decisions and the, and the personnel that are recommended will be to a high uh, level of excellence. With regard to the allegation that there will be another millage. There will not be another millage. This, this millage that we requested from the public, which was approved by an overwhelming majority, was the millage that we needed to avoid layoffs. We have had no layoffs of public safety personnel in this city and none are planned. One of the basic premises of the original uh, grant uh, for the safer grant was that you would hire 11 people and turn, then turn around and lay them off in two years. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all in terms of the families that are involved, in terms of the public expenditure of the training that it takes to make first class uh, uh, police officers and firefighters, which is our standard here. So there will not be another village. Uh, we constructed the millage the appropriate manner, went through all the legal requirements, and we are uh, not going to be bringing another village forward. With regard to the number of police officers that we are short, the number 30 was put out there, that is not an accurate number. With regard to the concept that we are not bargaining with our uh, fire and police unions, that is not true. We have a contract with the fire department, uh, which is, will be going into another year's negotiations, but we have had a contract with the fire department that did have uh, considerable concessions. Uh, we are in Act 312 arbitration with our police department, which is a respectful and appropriate way to settle grievances when you can't come to an agreement any other way. We are, we are going through the process. It is the legal process 
established for our particular taxpayers in our particular situation. This is not meant to be a negative comment for the constructors of the program, nor anyone on the federal level, okay, because they have to worry about the entire United States, but we have to worry about the city of Southfield. We went to work with the FEMA representatives. We explained the position of the city, the decrease in the taxable values of the city because of the, of the large commercial tax base, the largest percentage in the state of Michigan of any uh, city of our uh, size. Uh, and when we articulated this, gave them the exhibits, answered their questions, which took us a, a time to work through because it's a complex uh, uh, set of data uh, to, to articulate. Uh, they were very responsive, very understanding, and they worked with us. And this is a win-win, and as it was stated in our press uh, commentary uh, when, the, when the newspapers asked about this, this is an outstanding example of intergovernmental cooperation between the federal uh, and the city uh, municipal level. Uh, that really uh, concludes my comments. I could go further, but uh, um, uh, of course we appreciate the input. But when there are uh, when there are some errors that are significant, uh, we feel that we have to address them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shred. Uh, Mr. Lance, you want to make some comments? Yes, I'm going to say just a few words to Pam Gerald. Pam Gerald, you do not. Why are you walking out, Pam Gerald? You don't know what you're saying, Pam Gerald. You have been wrong. You have provoked the people outside. And I hope the people see it. We are an honest government here. That's why you have me, to keep it honest. And it's been honest. And it was, it's been the best government that I know of in the state of Michigan. We are all for the people. Fame Gerald is a provocateur. She provokes the people. And some people believe her, but don't. You just heard the administrator. He told you the truth on everything that's happening. And this is how government is run. Not the way Pam Gerald wants a government to run. She is wrong. She doesn't know what she's saying. Normally I wouldn't say anything. And I haven't up until now. But I hope it sinks in. She was sitting there smirking. It's just impossible, impossible. She, her, her behavior uh, just upsets everybody. She gets up a dozen times, walks to everybody of her cronies, and it's unbelievable. her. Well, I'm going to stop now, but I hope she understands. But she went out and she doesn't hear me. That's too bad. I couldn't sit, I can't be quiet anymore. I've known Pam Gerald 28 years. Well, that's enough for now. Oh, sorry, sorry. Thank you for your comments, uh, Councilman Lance, and thank you, Mr. Charette, for really clarifying uh, the position here in the city of Southfield. And the city of Southfield has been fortunate enough to secure the safer grant, which will result in the city. Fire, um, fire 
to not only give your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes. Geraldine Amato, and I'm here in Southfield, almost two months, staying uh, on uh, West Nine, Nine Mile Hill, I mean Nine Mile Hill, Nine Mile Road. I wanted to make some general statements about what I've learned about history over time. We recently had a celebration of the anniversary of the Declaration of Independence the 4th of July. Many Americans really do not understand the significance of the revolutionary era because we're not taught the truth in the history classes in schools nor in the mainstream press. That document, the, fourth of, uh, the Declaration of Independence, ends with a pledge which I believe needs to be renewed with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Under this current private commercial jurisdiction, we are far removed from the principles of the Republic. This flag that we pledge allegiance to an inanimate object is representative of a coast-to-coast -coast federal reservation. And if you study what has been done, by the controllers of the federal government to each individual Native American tribe that those controllers wanted to subdue, you will see that the same projects are being worked out coast to coast. I can only make general comments here because of the limitation of time, but my family has been a victim of organized crime within public institutions, so I know what I'm talking about. I have come to study a bit of Patrick Henry, one of the revolutionary era statesmen. He was not apparently a writer, he was an orator, but some of his speeches are still recorded. And I urge people to look those up and to read them, particularly those in Virginia Constitutional Convention uh, during that era when they scrapped the Articles of Confederation and adopted what's now called the U.S. Constitution, the Federal Constitution. If you read what Patrick Henry stated, he was against the adoption of a central government, which we now have. All the agendas on our municipal, uh, municipal bodies' uh, agendas are all blueprinted from Washington, D.C. When you look around Southfield, as you will look around other cities, we are no longer in control of our food supply. Our arable land has been built upon. We talk about the cosmetics of landscaping, but we're not providing food for our local populace. And if the masterminds decide to close down our resource of food coming in on ships and trucks and airplanes, we will be without sustenance and support because we are not in control of it ourselves. Our careers are linked to the corporate world who are owned by the owners of the wealth of this nation. And if we track what has happened, the owners of the banks of the cartels, the three of which are stationed and headquartered in Washington, D.C., the Federal Reserve, the IMF, and the World Bank. The people who own those banks of the cartels own us. We possess things, but we do not have ownership any, for, any longer. And I think of uh, this man, Henry Ford, that has a history here. I read not too long ago that one of the things he stated that I never heard before was, he said, the senior one, I believe that if the American people really understood the issue of money, there would be an armed revolution by tomorrow morning. Back to Patrick Henry, another thing he said that I never learned in school, to erect and concentrate and perpetuate a large moneyed interest must in the course of human events create two problems, the prostration of agriculture to the feet of commerce, and a change in the federal government fatal to American liberty. We are under a private commercial jurisdiction. We are being set up for economic collapse. The contracting of the economy that we are all enduring now was planned from back when. If we look at the history of the Federal Reserve Bank and how it evolved into place, and we know of two presidential assassinations that we were never told in school, nor are we told today, that were related to the confrontation of those presidents, uh, Kennedy and Lincoln, those are the two famous ones. There were three others, McKinley, Harding, I think, and uh, Garfield died. Your time died. is up, Mr. Mano. I have to call your time is up. You're, you're oh, you don't give you uh, like, uh, like 30 seconds? Uh, no, your time is up. You have to keep your own time. You're five
I messed this up and I can't. Oh, I didn't know. I'm, I'm the first time here. I was not But I, I told you at the beginning you had five minutes. And you please give your address to the clerk sitting here. You didn't give it Okay, up. well, if I'm welcome to come back, I'll try to come and finish uh, next time. That's fine. But I, thought you would, I didn't know I had to keep my own time. I thought you would give me I, the I'm not. No. no. Okay, fine. No, we're done. Why are you being hostile? I'm not. I'm just letting you know. But I did tell you you had five minutes. I know, but uh, I'm new here. I'm sorry. Yeah, great. I'm sorry, but I, ha I have to be fair to everyone, so I can't give you anything. I didn't hear you cut off anybody else. No one else went over their time. All right, council, we've we'll come to the council portion. There is one more speaker. No, this person is down here. Will you maybe just call to make the call to the audience? Uh, Toby Rose. I was told this person would not be here by our staff. All right, we come to the council portion. Madam Clerk, your matter is the President. I move that we approve the uh, expense reimbursement report for Sophie Jordan to uh, attend the Leadership Institute. Support. The motion by Mr. Fraser, support by Mr. Moss. All in favor? Aye. All the motion has carried. Anything else, Council? Yes. Madam Chair. Mr. Chair, sure. I'd like to first uh, uh, congratulate our Southfield students. In the Southfield Sunday's last issue, was a nice uh, insert that listed all the students, the colleges, and the grade scores, and scholarships. And, uh, and I was just uh, very pleased and, and proud of, of the grades and scores and all those that are going to under college. And I just wanted to congratulate each and every one of them. Uh, the other thing I'd like to put before the um, Finance Committee, Madam Chair, is uh, June 15th we received a uh, copy of a letter <coughs> regarding the South Hill Fire and Police Retirement System and your financial report. And uh, the last second to the last paragraph <coughs> it indicates that uh, that uh, their expenditures exceeded revenues by $12 million. These uh, funds uh, when there is a shortage uh, in the pension system, uh, that is spread among the taxpayers of the city. And we really sit back, at least I haven't seen a, a report from them on their investments as we do SUS or any of the other pensions. But this one in particular, if they fall short, um, that is on your tax bill. And, and so I would like to get this on the finance uh, committee, Madam Chair, and, uh, and explore some way we, we can uh, find out what's going on with, the, with that board. The um, other item that I'd like to uh, bring up is that at the last meeting we were talking about tax abatement, and we mentioned that there was a, a policy. Uh, it seemed like it was new to some individuals and, and uh, not existent to others. Uh, I would like to have that brought again before the Finance Committee so that if it is a negative to have a tax abatement policy, then we should explore whether or not we should abandon it or change it and bring it up to date uh, or follow it as it is presented. Um, the other item that I would like to uh, discuss at a, uh, at a uh, finance committee meeting is, uh, is uh, having a travel policy among elected officials so that, uh, that uh, we can get the expenditures in on time and find out uh, how they are budgeted. In other words, some are passed on between budgets, and I think that that has to be clarified. Uh, the last thing that I uh, would like to mention is that uh, the uh, Michigan Municipal League is having their uh, convention up at Mackinac Island. And uh, talking to uh, 
council secretary, you know, I seen that registration is almost four hundred dollars per for elected official. Uh, room rates uh, were two hundred fifty dollars. There's um, travel uh, by, by boat. There's travel by car. Uh, over two days, approximate cost would be about fifteen hundred dollars per individual attending the convention. I think in these days when we're cutting the hours in the library because there are not adequate funds to keep them open as they have been, that we should really be discreet in how we are going through these things. And, and especially Michigan Municipal League, they see what is a burden among the taxpayers to each and every city. And if you look at the Detroit News most recently, you know, the amount of villages that have been requested by municipalities is just unbelievable. And um, it just shows how much hurt it really is uh, trying to maintain services to the general public. And, um, and I think that the Michigan Municipal League should have found a more reasonable place to hold a convention so that uh, those who are unable to pay those and afraid to attend would be able to. Um, I'm sure those are the uh, things that oh, I have one other. And that is um, regarding the one hearing that we had um, on uh, special use, uh, the uh, request for appliance on Telegraph Road. And even though we do not see that at site plan meetings, it'd be nice to have a rendering in our materials that shows what changes uh, are going to be made as well as, uh, you know, we speed Jeff's uh, additions and requirements. But, uh, you know, we, uh, we're trying to enhance and give curb appeal in all areas. That building is pretty well dated. And, uh, you know, the 12 Mile of Greenfield, for example, they have that sports very paraphernalia kind of store. I don't know. They sell hats, Michigan hats, state hats, and all that. And they never came to the city to have a landscape plan. And it's, it's, it's unbelievable. A major intersection in the city should come into our city. Uh, Jerry uh, Kowski has done a great job in trying to work with them. But you know, it's all it's dated, it's full of weeds, uh, there's brush that is overhanging over the sidewalk. Um, uh, we ride on uh, Saturday when I can attend with Mr. Charette and, and Jerry and uh, put in a couple hours to look at these places. And when we have a change of ownership, we should be able to to look back at the previous site plan at least and make sure that the plannings that we first approved would either be maintained or changed or updated uh, or, they, or um, cleaned up. And um, I think we have to do a lot of work on those kinds of things to make our city look sharp. And you have a Walgreens across the street that is really uh, a nice, uh, lit and, and well done uh, drugstore. And across the street you have this uh, place that looks like it needs a real facelift. So that's it, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. And I will be working with Mr. Charette in getting these items before the Finance Committee. Well, I'm going to refer the travel policy with tax abatement issues to the Finance Committee. And I think we should uh, follow up with studying some council on these other issues that he's brought up. I think that's a good point to make. Thank you. Well, we will schedule the meetings with the Finance Committee and uh, prepare for the committee to all as appropriate. Thank you. Ms. Jordan. Yes, I have a few items here. First of all, a council, I'd like for us to explore banning um, the large holding recycle bins that have been going on all around the city. 
casual conversations about the clothing bins and pop are popping up everywhere. And parking is coming in parking lots. We don't know the really general or not, so I do think we have to have a discussion about that. Um, we, uh, this weekend, we spent some, uh, Mr. Witkowski and I spent considerable time um, really taking a look at how we could turn up the heat on certain things that have, you know, so I room for improvement. That's one area. Uh, we did, there was one uh, shopping center that right now, you know, is uh, in need of, uh, of uh, some attention. And uh, so, and that's being done. I see some work being done in one of the establishments there that's formerly vacant. Hopefully will will be uh, filled uh, shortly. But we noted that one of those bins was placed on that property without authorization. And so that will be, that is going to be gone this week. Uh, and uh, so I think it is worthy of a, of a discussion. Uh, and it's certainly not that we are not uh, concerned people because we are. Uh, we do have a human services department. It's one of the few cities in the state that still funds a human services department and that's because we care about people. We know that the city is more than brick, a lot more than just brick and mortar. So uh, we're going to, we'll, we'll take a look at that. But the whole thing about appearance um, uh, of certain property was brought to our attention by the mayor. We paid that certain property a visit this weekend. Uh, and we will uh, continue to to put, place a lot of attention on the appearance of the city. Uh, the residents deserve deserve that. Thank you. And uh, by the way, uh, through the chair, short your persistence is noted on the sign. Uh, and we have made some attempts, but apparently they haven't have been successful. So we're going to talk to our sign folks and also uh, reiterate it. Uh, to as far as the traffic violations. But I think the key is that we do the signage. Is your right, it isn't working. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Short, we should, uh, I don't know how we handle this thing on the bins, but some of these bins are taking up parking places. We don't know if they're legitimate organizations or not. We one, might want to consider a permit. Um, there was one, uh, there were two of them brought to our attention uh, that, did, that did hinder the sight line. Uh, those have been removed uh, by the by the business owners, but uh, the, the whole the, the whole uh, idea needs a, needs a discussion, comprehensive Let's discussion. Let's put that on a future agenda. We definitely have to have some sort yes. of. Uh, well, we'll replace that on a future items list right. that we keep. But do some, do some background work uh, at the staff level and then see what we can do. All right. Uh, anything else, council? We have an expense report here for Ms. Jordan. For the National of Cities Leadership Institute. We did that earlier. Is that approved? Okay. Um, I had a note, but I don't. Uh, that was my reason. I'd like to say something. Yes, else. I have. I have that. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Yeah, yeah that's going to be the council portion. And um, um, my, wife and, my wife and I went to, uh, we're going to have some work done in our, we're going to just upgrade in our, our home. And we went to a, a location that was specialized in uh, kitchens and baths, and I was really pleased, it was, unfortunately it was in Birmingham, uh, that along that strip, the store that we went in, along that same strip, there were complementary businesses. The business next to it was flooring, the, the, the one next to it was a paint store, and uh, so there were complementary businesses, so you could park one time and do Go to two or three, and I don't know. I don't know if it was accidental that they they uh, did that, or if that was part of a plan. But it would I, I would ask that uh, our planning department take a look at it, see if there's a, a way that we could establish those complementary type businesses, and encourage people to when they come into the planning department to look for a, a complement complementary type business that that uh, has a an empty, an empty place. That, um, because I, I thought it was very neat myself. Uh, I don't know, I don't know how to do it, but it was, uh, it worked. So. May I comment on the Yes, go ahead, Mr. Uh At the National League of Cities, we had a presentation on just that, and they used the, um, the website so that when uh, you wanted to um, set up if you're looking for an opportunity to do business in the uh, community. Um, the uh, things, uh, the, uh, the 
zoning and the uh, type of businesses uh, you can type in um, uh, a paint store, home improvement, maybe a better term, and where else they were located, or a medical supply, or, or whatever it was. And I, I, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, I think it was East Coast, Florida, uh, was used as a model uh, community that's doing this. Uh, the uh, the underscoring thing that the presenter said is that many times um, people are making a decision about uh, a community and you don't even know it um, because they're, uh, they're, they're doing their research online and um, I know I brought this up before that um, uh, as uh, Sally Price and others on staff have been um, expanding our use of uh, the website that this, this would be a very valuable tool for us. Thank you, Mr. Sutter. Anyone else? All right, next we have the mayor's portion. Uh, Madam Chair. Mr. Frazier. Uh, I move that we approve the expense report for President Lawrence for attending the U.S. Saudi Business Conference. Or Motion by Mr. Frazier, supported by Mr. Moss. All in favor? Aye. Madam Chair, I'm going to abstain on this one. Is there a reason? I have to consult with the city attorney because our policy says that we can't abstain unless we have a... For an abstention, the, the member would indicate what the reason for the abstention is. Either there's a financial interest or a appearance of yeah. interest. I just... Uh, I need more explanation, and and I do feel like I can vote on this right now tonight. Is it related to the age of the reason? Well, I'm not, I'm not into it. I, I just don't want to discuss it until right. I get further explanation. All right. So we have a um, motion by Mr. Frazier and supported by... Mr. Rose. Um, thank you. All in favor? We did already. Already, all right. We're ahead of me. All right. Um, next to come to administration, Mr. Schroeder. Madam Chair, I do have something. Oh, go ahead. Um, I think that uh, it should be discussed if there's an issue with travel. And I heard the council did some things about his concern about travel. Uh, the whole process that we use, uh, it should be discussed so it's not voting time. If there are any concerns, there should be a process and uh, I would appreciate that because I feel uh, very strongly that the way that concerns are handled, especially um, internally, that it's done in a way that's not productive for resolving the issue. So I would, I would appreciate if we uh, have a truthful meeting uh, process and concerns can be uh, voice without it being a uh, uh, undermined process. I have, um, I wanted to compliment the Woodland Civic Association on their um, picnic. Um, they were just one of many that I've had the opportunity to attend this year. And, it's, and, and I complimented them. I just want to say to all the neighborhood associations out there who are working hard to continue to develop that sense of community in our in our city. It is a it is so refreshing because in the city of South Hill we all know that it's the block clubs, it's the neighborhood association, those communities that give that make South Hill a great city. And um, it was just an energized um, group of people. And one of the beautiful sections is we have so many in our city, every section is beautiful. But it was, uh, it was refreshing and it was uh, nice to be there. I also want to share, I, I, I don't want to be, um, this to be perceived as a um, negative, but I received a phone call from the, uh, from the president of St. John Health and having a real concern about the, the area around Providence Hospital. Um, it was not a pleasant conversation. Um, 
in any of you, you know, we talk a lot about other parts of the city and sometimes we even point our finger and say Northland is an area that's not desirable and sometimes even when the uh, DDA is here making a presentation, it's a time to criticize. But Northland DDA area is a part of Southfield. It is our city. And when you cross 8 Mile, we've, we've been talking about this sense of place, that when you cross 8 Mile and come into South Hill, you should know you're in South Hill. And I'm very concerned about that area. If you look at the maintenance of the building, if you look at 8 Mile, I mean, we've started to have homelessness living under the bridge. I mean, living. There are people you can see literally sleeping. There are mattresses. There are the cart scattered. Then I, and I hope that we are engaged enough to know that we must make a difference. Oh, in the in the strip mall with uh, one of our wonderful developments over in the DDA with the Kroger and the um, CVS, I get numerous complaints about people being. Uh, approached by people soliciting money, by people who are um, in in the in the um, shopping center, actually people gathering there every day, sitting on crates, and customers are going in and out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not this is not acceptable in South Hill. And I what I'm saying today is that we might have to roll up our sleeves and partner with the DDA is not, you know, it's easy for us to sit here and say it's their fault, but this is our city and this is our image. Every election we talk about the Northland area. And we're going to have to invest and be serious and DDA, city council, code enforcement, everybody needs to be at the table. And I'm telling you one of the areas that I'm most concerned about is that bus station. We have activity that is not becoming, criminal activity that is not becoming to the city of South. And we cannot sit here as elected officials and turn our heads from that. It's our city and it's unacceptable. There is, you know, we talked about is there surveillance of that area? Because we've, we've heard of people just standing at the bus station and possibly distributing drugs. The bus is going and they're just standing. Well, is there surveillance? Well, guess what? Northland has surveillance, but they're only surveilling to see if anything is happening within the mall. And that is outside the mall. It is not their property. The city of Detroit owns it. We must, we, we've got to step it up because this is not acceptable. I can tell you, and you know the mode that I'm in right now, the campaign mode. That's the attack I get all the time. The city of Southfield, you know, that Northland area. And we, I mean, I'm serious about this. I am very serious. And what can we do? I don't know all the answers, but I'm confident that in the city of Southfield, we have the resources and we have the political leadership to start turning that around. And I talk about code enforcement. I'm passionate about it. And when I ride around in that area, I'm not proud of it. I'm not. When I go into those buildings, I, I, I see these buildings, and I know they're not a class A building, but, and I can't, I mean, I start talking about the apartment buildings in that area. And you know, I, I, all of us have brought some issues, but that one building that we had to go in, I was told at a beauty salon that that existed, and I told them no way that existed in my city. Not in South Hill. And I took my car and drove over there. And because the building wasn't secured, able to walk through it, and I was totally disappointed. So it's our building, it's our public works, it's our police. It is, it is us. And we can, I mean, this is, this is, this will be our legacy if we turn that area around. It goes to our planning department, our economic development. Are we partnering with them to, to redevelop that area? Are we bringing those on? And they are outside, of, I can tell you. I know for a fact, Shelly has talked to those people a number of times. She has gone to the, to the, to the uh, 
conference of a retail shopping center. I have joined her. I, was, I went when it was uh, Nick Banda here. I know you've talked to him. But it's past talking now. It's past talking. And we're going to have to become serious about that. Um, and I'm confident we will. I think from this point on, we should be able to tell our citizens we're going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm confident we can do it. Um, the other thing I, I, I wanted to mention, and I, I, I'm glad that um, Councilman Pekowski brought it up, is the achievement of our children in the city. We have a lot to be proud of for our educational system. And while all of us are challenged, and I, I just want to go back to, to the public comment that was made, too. I would never support another village in the city. I can tell you we have never talked about having another. It was painful for us to even get to the one that we went to. But there is not a city that's existing now that hasn't cut back on the fire fleet, having reduced their budget. Because if we had not, we would be in a situation of financial guidance. And so we have done what we needed to do and we are maintaining a safe community. And, and, and if we had not changed the way we do business, and any contract or any, anyone saying, I just want things to stay the same, the reality is, is that this economy, our taxes, our revenue, none of that is the same. So we cannot remain the same. And we say, we, it's, it's a process. It's, it's a partnership of respect, negotiation, in getting the job done. So uh, I'm proud of what we have achieved, accolades to the council. I, I make sure that I say that um, because in setting <coughs> policy and what you have to do, and, and with our city administration, this has been not an easy time. And um, I'm proud of the decisions that have been made. I'm going to close with there is an election next Tuesday. And I hope everyone will exercise their right to vote. Um, there's always discussion during election time about people coming out to vote. And I just want to say, women, we have not had the right to vote 100 years. We only have the right to vote since the 1920. And we have, uh, along with the Civil Rights Movement, where we had to fight and people died. I remember watching my grandmother watch the civil rights movement and I was a child crying when the dogs were attacking people and they were spraying the hoses and watch her cry of the person from the south who lived through all that. And so many people take it for granted. The election is August 7th and I say this every time is that exercise your right to vote because when you don't vote you don't have a voice and when you don't have a voice this political process will ignore you. And so many people complain that I don't know because no one hears me and no one cares. Well, if you don't if you don't use your voice, you will be ignored. So August 7th, I encourage everyone to go to the polls and vote. Thank you. Ms. Seymour, can we go back to the council portion for a minute? Yes. There are some uh, two things I wanted to mention on graph. Uh, first of all, and um, Mayor Lawrence reminded me, uh, talking about neighborhood associations, um, I want to give uh, kudos to um, all of the neighborhood association presidents that showed up, showed up last week. It was incredible. Um, we had a workshop put on by our community relations department, and here we are in the middle of July on a hot day, and um, uh, over 70 people attended caring about their neighborhoods, caring about the, the, the city, and uh, sharing ideas of how we can uh, strengthen uh, and keep our neighborhood associations going. Um, Mayor Lawrence was there, uh, Council President Seymour, myself, and Councilman Moss uh, attended. It was an excellent session, and we had so many people out. Um, you'd think maybe in summer, be on vacation or in a different mode, but um, they came out because they care about the city and, uh, and their neighborhoods. And uh, uh, I really appreciated seeing all those folks and um, their passion about their neighborhoods. It, it was a very good evening. Um, the other thing I wanted to um, mention is uh, I assume my colleagues have all received a, um, uh, seems to be a form email but there are, uh, I've received three of them now from the uh, uh, Wildlife uh, Federation about a city challenge, uh, an environmental challenge, and it, it's uh, an opportunity for a grant. Um, and I'd like to make a, um, uh, an administrative uh, 
going to be, uh, um, they, there's money available, they're looking for cities to participate. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if it fits, um, if it fits for us, but um, it's uh, thirty to $50,000 uh, grant. Perhaps it's something that uh, we could uh, uh, benefit from. No, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. We'll provide you this information. That, uh, it is about the environment. Uh, 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 some ideas on conservation. Is it uh, National Wildlife Federation? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, resident uh, uh, Robert Thompson and Peggy Collins uh, were the two names that come to mind right away um, that sent this uh, in. Forwarded it on to us, is that it? Um, and um, in our council email. Mm -hmm. But I, I, <coughs> I, I did look it over and I, I did contact the uh, Federation uh, and got a response back today, but um, my computer went down so I don't have the whole thing. Knowledge in front of me of what the response was. Uh, so anyhow, you know, I'd like to make that referral. Um, we're environmentally responsible. We'll take it. It's, it's worth a look. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. The next item, uh, Mr. Yeah. Sure. I did want to say uh, Sean Campbell. I don't know if it relates to uh, uh, the mayor's comments, and I have to say I totally agree with you. I happen to go. I normally go to the Target. <laughs>
department than we did. And they also had uh, taken the oath where they are bona fide officers, could make arrests, they carried guns. I mean, that's the way Northland Mall ran for years. And it was, <coughs> it was run in a different, in a, bus in a business way, in the atmosphere today, uh, we have people who are taking advantage of, of a, an area they call the shopping center, and they don't really care about fixing anything up. So all they care about is getting the cash rent from their, whoever tenants are, and, and walking away with a profit. And they ought to be towing the mark. Either do tow the mark or get out of town. And, and I mean, it's about time, you know, instead of talking, I mean, I don't know um, what, the, what the meeting would be and who would be at that meeting, but, you know, the New York had problems and they, they started with a zero tolerance um, and, and everything just quelled. And Boston did the same thing. And, and here we sit, we see a problem, and I'm saying is, you know, you, you go in with uh, uh, a, a hit list and group and clean it up. And, and that means the businesses that don't want to to uh, toe the mark, they go too. You know, they can stay within the law, of course, but, but I mean, you know, and DDA has to get tougher. And, you know, I mean, they come before council and it's either got to be assessment or something that's going on or something they're doing or, or tearing down a building, but you know, we had good things happening there with the $28 million worth of reconstruction and, and, and expansion of, of the Open Community College. I tell them, you know, you go to Beaumont, they've got purple lights in the, in, in the parking lots. You know, you go down to Wayne State, they got these lights, I don't know if they're blue or pink or purple, whatever they are, but people feel secure when those things are available to them. And they have walking people. And when people walk and jog and are outside, that that is intimidation to anybody who tries to commit a crime. And so, I mean, somehow we've got to, to get tougher, and I said zero tolerance, and just move along. I think we've got to include some discussions with the owners of Northland because they also own Eastland Mall. Yeah. How could they turn around one mall that was fantastic in the surrounding stores and leave Northland the way it is? I think we've got to, you right. just can't leave it to the DBA. I think we've got to step in as an elected body, demand they come to the table, bring other people to the table, really have a good and I just, I know that this isn't a time, but look at what they did with the DMC. The DMC Midtown had a crime issue. They they took the policing uh, body of the DMC of Wayne State and also of uh, uh, what's the other one? Um, it's three of them. The Detroit Police Department. And they have reduced crime in that area because they have joined a partnership. Now you have, the, in our area, you have OCC, you have uh, Providence, and you have Northland, and you have the South of Police. You know, if nothing else, and one of the things they did at, at Eastland, they moved the bus station from back behind the mall out to the front. So they're not, because right now they're in that cold in their city. And that's part of the reason why they feel comfortable with that activity because you have to drive back around in there to see any of the activity. So, Madam Chair, we took this on an agenda. I mean, we really, this is a very important part of our city, is the whole cornerstone, Northland. And I know Providence has done great things, OCC has done great things. But if you still ignore Northland, you've not really developed that area of the city. And it's a crucial area. I don't think they're so much being ignored. From what I understand, uh, the, 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 the bus, DDOT does not want to. I'm not just talking not about DDOT, DDOT. I'm talking about everything in that area and putting it on a COW and really just giving a strategy. We can certainly do that. You know, one other thing has to be, uh, has not been said here, and there has to be cooperation with the city of Detroit. A lot of the homeless people and the people that are out panhandling are on uh, right across the aisle of uh, the bridge.
there and, and point it out. I mean, that's close to where I live. Um, I, every time I go downtown, um, there are people there. There's there's stations there, and the, the city of Detroit seems to ignore it, as well as the weeds, the proliferation of signs selling everything under the sun, uh, yard signs. Uh, it's unsightly. And I know I have spoken to the Eight Mile Boulevard Association about the signs when they do occasional sweeps, but um, um, it, it, is, it's, it is a disgrace. And, and a lot of it is, if it, you know, the, uh, um, the people that are on the street don't really uh, uh, dis uh, discern whether it's South or Detroit. They just don't tolerate it there. Yeah, one of the one of the things is, um, and I and I work with uh, the the uh, Mr. Achievus and, and some, uh, the guy that that owns uh, the mall with the program. And one of the problems that they have with panhandlers, and the police are frustrated because if somebody's panhandling and they see a police car come along, they just walk in the store like they're like they're a shopper until the police go away and then they come back out and panhandle. So uh, the police have to catch them in the act of panhandling. Uh, they can do something about it. But even at that, when they go to court, it's, you know, it's kind of like a slap on the wrist and they're back there again. Uh, so we do have to sit down. I agree that we need to sit down and find a better way of getting this all done. Because what's happening now is Yes, um, as a matter of uh, public information and uh, for council consideration of approval, uh, at the July 16, 2012 uh, study session, uh, we reviewed the revised and unified sewer and water services connection loan program. I'd like to, uh, first of all, uh, comment on the level of policy discussion uh, of the Mayor and City Council on this item. Because it's, it's uh, very difficult to, to understand and some of the terms and the history is uh, rather complex. Um, I'd also like to thank the staff uh, for uh, quality staff work and the research. Uh, Deputy City Administrator uh, Fred Zorn, the Building Department, Public Works staff, uh, and the Legal Department, uh, uh, Sue Workowski. Thank you very much uh, for the for the work on this. Uh, what we've done, uh, Council by way of review, we've taken the four programs that have uh, evolved over the years since 1998 uh, through uh, 2011 to assist our uh, residents uh, and businesses uh, in hooking up to uh, city uh, water and 
service our businesses uh, uh, in this way. Uh, for the first three years, uh, to assist with the cost of the hookup, uh, we would make the first three years uh, to be interest only at 3% per annum, and the remaining uh, cost could be uh, amortized over 15 years for a total term of 18 years. So it's 3% for three years, interest only, and then uh, with the other uh, balance uh, amortized over uh, 15 years for a total of 18 years. Of course, there is no penalty uh, for uh, paying uh, any of these costs uh, early, and uh, the city is protected uh, by through uh, uh, proper legal channels in terms of the uh, it being a lien on the uh, property. Uh, we have an ordinance uh, that we're, we would like to uh, uh, get this program going as soon as possible. So uh, the city attorney's uh, office has prepared a resolution that has an ordinance, uh, emergency ordinance within it, and so we ask for council's consideration of approval uh, this evening. Thank you. Madam President, I would move the um, ordinance regarding the revised uh, new device of uh, sewer and water service connection loan program. Support. Motion by Mr. Flagler, supported by Mr. Frazier. All in favor? Aye. Aye. How will this motion be carried? Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we introduce ordinance number 1596. 1596 and enact it as as an emergency ordinance. Support. A motion by Mr. Frazier, supported by Mr. Cyber, that we enact ordinance 1596. Introduce and enact. Introduce and enact ordinance 1596 as an emergency ordinance. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion has passed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We uh, come to the attorney's question. Ms. Ward, is there anything you have for the evening? I have nothing tonight. Thank you. Next, we come to the planners, clerk, uh, the planners of their engineering portion. So, Mr. Planner has a uh, proposed resolution for 90 day extension of the moratorium. Mr. The, go ahead. For the chair. Uh, with regard to pawn shops and alternative financial institutions, we currently have a moratorium in place, which is set to expire on August 11, 2012. Based upon our recent study session with the City Council, we are requesting a 90-day extension through November 9, 2012, to give us time to set up public hearing tentatively for September 24th and to enact regulations. I'll so move, Madam Chair. Motion by Mr. Krakowski, supported by Mr. Sessions. All right. All in favor? Aye. All the motion has carried. The uh, extension is granted. Thank you, Mr. Crow. Uh, now we come to the treasurer, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wallander. Thank you very much. Madam President, Honorable Council, and uh, just wanted to give a follow-up, first of all. At the last regular council meeting, uh, council gave permission to issue an RFP uh, for the refunding and refinancing of $3.5 million approximately of bonds that the city had, uh, 11-year term was remaining on them. And we were able, at that time, we were estimating that the savings were going to be about $250,000 for the city. We were able to get very favorable interest rates uh, proposed by a few of the local banks, and uh, the winning bid was by PNC Bank, and they were able to issue us the bonds at 1.78% for 11 years, which is a fantastic rate, and uh, it will net us a savings of about $350,000 for our city. So I'd like to thank the council for giving us permission to do that, and uh, hopefully we'll be looking for other opportunities as well to reduce our expenditures and uh, pass along the savings to our taxpayers. Uh, also this evening, uh, we have our annual update for our depository resolution, and uh, we're asking for um, renewal of that. Uh, there's a few updates that we issued. Uh, we have two banks that we're adding, Bank of Birmingham and a new bank that's located now in Southfield, Hans Bank. And we removed four banks, as well as also adding four brokerage firms, broker dealers, to the list. I'll move, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Perkowski, supported by Mr. Frazier, to accept the annual update of the resolution. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Chair, I would just like to uh, state that uh, <coughs> the Treasurer and had uh, Mr. Uh, Virginia, uh, and also Denver.
was at the July 17th uh, uh, council finance meeting that we were able to have uh, Cutwater Asset Management as our consultants from Denver, as well as George Rita uh, of Master Strategies, they're our monitor, as well to, to give an update on the performance report on our investments. And fortunately, uh, with our diversification that we had and with uh, the strategies that we invoked, we were able to be in the top percentile of the country right now um, as far as the, the investment performance. And so we were able to outperform our benchmarks and we look to continue that performance. Um, this is, uh, we have an annual update also for our city's investment policy. At that meeting, we reviewed a couple of different uh, items which uh, we should look at to diversify our investment portfolio. Uh, those changes were redlined in the policy, and uh, we're asking for the renewal of, of and updates of the uh, commission uh, from the council. Uh, the recommendation is that uh, council adopt the attached investment policy.